Okay, so now it's time to take a look at the results of that uh, comparison test. And just to say at the outset that all the photos I took, I took um, as raw, um, using auto white balance, uh, despite how vague that can be on the Sigma. Um, and they're shot in aperture priority mode. The Sigma I set to ISO 100, the Fuji was set to auto ISO and it ranged from 200 to 640. To be honest, I don't think it made a big difference for this test, but you know, we'll have a look at the results and see what you think. The Fuji raw files were processed in silky pics. Um, the the uh, Sigma raw files went into Sigma Photo Pro and I exported as TIFF and then took those into Darktable. In both cases, I've done minimal um, edits to the files, tiny bit of light process just to bring up shadows and slight contrast, but nothing significant, I wouldn't say. Just enough to make them a pleasing image, uh, but that's all. Um, we'll look in each, uh, I think I've chosen five examples, and we'll look at the Fuji image first, followed by the Sigma image followed by a side by side. Um, yeah, see what we think. This first Fuji image um, was shot at 60th of a second, ISO 320. Um, and I think the colors are accurate from from my memory. Um, and I think it's got a nice kind of smooth out of focus background. I may not have nailed the focus 100%, but I think it actually you know, it, it provides quite a pleasing um, set of colours in the uh, in the palette. Um, yeah, seems good. And this first Sigma image um, shot at fiftieth of a second, ISO one hundred. I think both of this and the Fuji were shot at f two point eight. Um, I think the whole thing is a bit colder, which. Um, you know, may have uh, maybe the, maybe the white balance is slightly colder. Um, the, certainly, the greens are less vibrant and more muted. Uh, the out of focus areas you can particularly see it kind of towards that bottom left hand corner. Uh, that's I think that's pretty messy. Um, but let's have a look at them side by side. And I think here you get a you know, a really good kind of view of. Um, the pleasing warm colours on the Fuji and the much colder colours in the Sigma. Um, obviously the field of view is slightly different just because of the um, you know, disparity in the lenses that I was using. But certainly I think the Fuji provides a much, uh, much nicer end result there. So onto this kind of, um, I guess it's a cloudscape really. Um, Fuji 80th of a second, um, ISO 200, I think it was at something like f, f uh, 5.6 or 6.3. Very, um, pretty smooth rendering of the clouds. I, I, I think this from, I think this from my, you yeah, know, from my memory of the scene from when I was there, I think this is pretty accurate, pretty close to what I was seeing. And, you know, it's, I think it's, um, for what it is, obviously it's not meant to be startling the uh, original image or anything like that, but I think it's, um, you know, it's a good accurate representation. Now the Sigma is, the Sigma view of this is obviously slightly um, different. You've got a lot of additional detail in the clouds, and I think that does make for, um, makes for a, a more kind of impactful image. Um, I think both, Oh, let's let's look side by side. Again, I think the the colours are colder on the Sigma side, um, but both I think both images are um, equally valid. They're both um, you know, equally representative. Uh, I think I prefer the the Sigma image produced by the Sigma just because it, it, it holds my interest more um, because there's that much more detail in the cloud but I think e equally again you know 
either image is um, is fine. Moving on to the late sun on the bracken and the trees in the distance. Um, this image from the Fuji just feels feels exactly like it was. It feels, you know, very warm late sun, um, very warm looking late sun, even though it's a chilly day. Um, yeah, let's take a look at the Sigma. It, it, what I find interesting here is that whilst the light on the bracken and the trees in the distance looks very similar, and we'll see it in the side by side, it looks similar to me, to the Fuji, but those greens are far more vivid, which I probably wasn't expecting from the um, from the Sigma. Let's take a look side by side. Generally slightly colder tones in the sky and the cloud, but yeah, I'm I'm not sure that I like the um, the very vivid green. Of course, I could mute that down in in in, in post processing. I'm sure, but I'm not. I prefer the um, I prefer the Fuji image there. Just a it's probably just a personal preference thing. I'm taking a look at the if I when I actually turned it around, this was the view in the other direction, looking down the path. Um, again, Fuji. That feels you know feels accurate to what I was seeing on the day, and if we look at the sigma view, well, again it's different, but I think it's neither better nor worse necessarily. It looks side by side. Yeah, there's pro probably a little bit more drama in the sky again from the um, from the sigma, but I think. The Fuji has managed the shadow areas in the gorse better. Um, other than that, I don't think there's a lot in it really. I think either are fairly representative and uh, I think the Fuji again wins. I think that's probably a better image. Again, probably a personal preference thing. And if I only had, you know, if I only using the one camera, then I'd be happy with either. Let's move on to the last of the images, the kind of cloudscape. So Fuji, this is what I would expect from Fuji, I guess, those kind of pinky salmon cloud colours. I, uh, I think they're probably, are they accurate from what I remember at the time? Probably, possibly. Memory is a strange thing, isn't it? Um, but yeah, I think I'm quite pleased with that, the way the Fuji has, um, has handled that. Let's take a look at the sigma, and I can't, uh, yeah, I can't say whether that was uh, more accurate or less accurate. There's certainly, I think, there's more detail in the cloud, um, and it's certainly obviously a more yellow, orange, amber type um, representation. I think it makes for a more striking image. But let's take a look side by side. Yeah, and it's probably more the detail in the cloud rather than the colours per se I think that, that give it that little bit extra um, that, that bit more interest a little bit more drama there possibly but again um, you know they're just different aren't they it's not necessary that one's better than the other so from that perspective I think you know we're going to need to test this um, this comparison a little bit further with a more even uh, lineup next time. So that probably wasn't the most um, scientific or maybe even the most fair comparison there. I'm not sure about what part that Zon Lai 22mm lens played in that comparison. So I think we need to try, you know, there are some other things we need to try. Not that the Fuji fared badly at all compared to the Sigma. And certainly when it came to kind of the more close-up stuff, the out-of-focus areas um, on the Fuji images were, I think, much nicer. Um, so we've got, we've got a few things to look at there. I think generally the, generally the images, you could say it's a matter of personal preference as to which you prefer in, in quite a lot of those, well, in, in all of those examples virtually. 
one's neither better than the other, um, they're just different. Um, and I think whilst the images take a little more processing, a little more hard work for the, for the Sigma, the post-processing is, is, is harder and more involved, it pays dividends on occasions because the Sigma, I think, can turn out a better image but not in all circumstances. I think there are certainly some examples there, particularly the more close-up stuff, where I think the Fuji is definitely better. And on some occasions, the Fuji definitely provides more pleasing colours. That could be altered in post. But um, again, that would just be even more work on, um, on the Sigma images. So interesting, but not conclusive yet. <laughs>